All right, welcome back to SOS. I'm Stas Arm Badass. Today I've got a bunch of leather work projects. I'm raising money for the kids' Christmas, and that this is kind of how I do it. And if you've got a project for me out there and you need me to work on something for you, uh, contact me in the email. The email's in the about section for those that ask. I usually get asked when I post a video on this. So in the about section, it'll say for business inquiries. Uh, it's right there. And um keep in mind you know i get uh i get the uh hey i'm tom cruise or i'm patrick swayze or you know whoever this guy is that they're making something for and they're doing it for a school bus of children that work for whatever uh uh their uh what is it cub scouts or something right and they they want me to make a knife sheath for each and every one of them and ask if i could do a dollar a piece or something it uh, I get weird things like that, and there's no way of of confirming that that type of person. You know, there's no way of confirming. I get people that are like, oh, you know, it's for my dying grandmother. You know, uh, this is the last gift I'll ever give her. I get these these types of trips all the time. It's still the same price. I I don't play the whole. Uh, I, I can't do it because um, I. And when it comes to leather work, I don't trade for knives. I don't do that stuff anymore. Uh, it it doesn't it doesn't put food on the table. Everybody understand? It if you you go to work every day, and I have to do what I've got to do to raise money for my kids too. I am also classified as a disabled vet. Most folks don't know that either. They just assume I'm just some guy on YouTube or whatever. But I like to lay that out there. So that being said, I got that out of the way. That was my rant. And now I'm going to get into some leather work. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, for today's video, we have all of this. Uh, let's see. I have to make a scalp carry axe sheath. I'm assuming they're going to want it to be somewhat easy to take out. I've got to do that. Uh, so it's not a normal mask. It's actually a scalp sheath. Then I have two Pathfinder knives. This one has to be scout carry and belt four belt scout carry i'm assuming belt and scout carry but that is for this guy here and i don't have much work to do do i this is for a belt i'm assuming this is going to be some sort of quick quick draw mcgraw type thing there's that one and then i have over here, this says for PJF. I don't know who that is, but anyway, <laughs> uh, there's this. It has to be uh, has to be scout carry and leg. Yep, it says uh, belt scout carry. Whew. I got my work cut out for me, and I'm doing the buck knife. So first things first, what I like to do, you see, I've got this piece of cardboard over this board here. What I do is I separate when I go to make my sheaths. I'm going to do these one at a time. But put yourself down some cardboard. It makes it easier if you're going to use a staple gun in molds, making molds for all the knives. Use cardboard to divide it. it makes it easier to remove. I don't want to spend a lot of time removing staples. That's just a tip from me. And now i got to get started. Way to go today. Now this is one solid piece of five ounce leather and yes i used the staples that's uh just fast and easy way of getting it done and just get i take you can get these um from any arts and crafts section lowe's home depot but i get these wooden rods and i just cut them down this is uh all you do go through here and do your outline of your knife this is a buck and i'm doing this up real quick to get it shipped out i'm collaborating a bunch of videos today together of all the leather work projects which i have like 10 or so but i'm going to do a few of them together today <laughs>
one thing you've got to keep in mind before you put all these things together if you're building a scout carry sheath this is dual purpose scout and uh, hip and I'm believing one person is actually left-handed so I need to make one of these a left-handed sheath and knowing where everything lines up at you can lay this flat and line this up this is going to get stitched in and you're going to have to rivet so extra material here is good to have plus I'm going to be doing over here I'll be doing some loopholes through here and you'll see that as I build I'm building some loopholes they don't have to be there but they might want to loop something there I'll add a little piece of paracord or something you know whatever but uh, that's just the thing now uh, I'm going with the smaller snaps that should be fine for what I'm doing here and you just got to get this part done first uh, because it's in it's important to get it done before you start stitching things up and if you're having trouble reaching the you know if you need to crimp this down and you can't quite reach it one thing that I do is just kind of you want to lightly tap it with the hammer and it'll start to press that leather in more and it'll bring it up a little bit more so you can get to it. And you give it three good taps. That's usually about average for me. It's about three. And then you'll have presto. So now I've got the snaps done. I don't have to worry about that part. These are external, so I don't have to worry about anything getting in my way to put snaps on them. So that's not really that big of a deal. And these are kind of on standby. And I made them extra long, so I'll have plenty of material to work with when I'm laying out, uh, when I do my rivets, because these will go on last, very last item to go on. Uh, snaps for this poor portion, I make these longer. The, these butterflies here are a lot longer because once I get the sheath assembled and stitched, then I'll know how much I need to cut off of here. So I make this a little bit longer and then I'll add my thumb groove you know a nice little groove for this it won't be square and uh, I start doing all that stuff towards the end it just it and that way you know if you're doing some cutting like for example cutting like this and you got the the regular leather that shows up you have more dye so I do pre dye so I don't have to worry about uh, the little nooks and crannies like the inside that's the reason why I pre dye so I don't have to go reaching in there and getting all this stuff before I assemble so that's one reason why I do it this way. Sometimes I forget and I'll assemble a sheath like this one and I had to get in those grooves. Now once this dries, this will all match. It'll be one color. But at the moment, it's not it's still wet. You can still tell it's wet. Uh, but see, so I have one of these. These are not like the, <laughs> one of these. Uh, one of these is not quite like the other, right? So there's this one and then there's this one. So one's left-handed and one's right-handed. And I'm making two sheets that are identical, one's left and one's right. And it just makes my life a little bit easier because they want drop leg and they want this, they want that. So uh, you start calculating a lot of extra things going into a project. It runs into more time and more money. Okay, because, you know, my efforts and hard labor and time uh, <laughs> will greatly predict how much a project costs. Uh, just adding a ferrule rod or something, incorporating a ferrule rod or incorporating uh, a pouch. Like if you did a pouch, for example, I set this out just so you could see. If you incorporate a pouch into a project like this, I mean, it depends on the size of the pouch. You just you just incorporated a ton of more work because now I've got to figure out how on earth do I incorporate a pouch into a scout carry sheath so I know that I've only got this much room to work with between these two snaps so you start running into problems and that's where it starts getting complicated and that's why these projects can cost some money so anyway but um, I guess we're going to keep going on this right now I've got this done and I wanted to share that with you guys and now I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to apply my epoxy and I'm going to put my clamps on and let this set and dry uh, so it'll be nice and uh, nice and healed up there and then I can run it through and start putting my stitches in. All right, so I'm not sure what day I'm on, but right now 
I am at this stage. I think I can remove these. Uh, super glue will work in your advantage to hold things in place like this. I want to stitch through it and I still want to rivet it. So I'm going to be doing both. Now, to rivet something like this, you need large rivets. And those are the really long ones. This is a big, big difference. And when you go tandyleather.com and you start looking at parts like snaps and things, I'm working with 10 ounce leather. Not most folks do that for knife sheets. They usually use like four, five. I go super thick because I'm thinking of the conditions it might be in and I want it to last forever. So that being said, you've got to look up components for the leather you're using. So if you're going to be using 10 ounce leather, then you need to get rivets that rivets and snaps and everything for 10 ounce leather because once you start stacking them up, you're going to need large rivets. You can't get any of this done with medium rivets. So I want I can't stress that enough uh, doing this cuz with rivets like this, these are all large antique brass, but I've got to start making the stitch for these. Uh, this is all hemmed up nicely. This is for the buck knife. Uh, this still has to be dyed. Uh, this has turned out quite well. So is this little guy. <laughs> Cute little thing. Anyways, and then uh, here's the other one of those. They're identical. They're just one's left and one's right. And this contraption, this is crazy. Now, I heard the call for you know, making it scout carry, making it uh, belt carry, all this stuff. So uh, back here, uh, now I'm going to stitch through this. So I haven't added the rivet yet. But at the moment, this is this is going to get stitched up, cleaned up. So it's got a long way to go and I still have to dye it. But I wanted to have a solid loop back here. So an individual could just use the solid loop, undo the snaps, you know, scalp somebody real quick. And then uh, they could also utilize the whole thing. They could run a belt through this, this, and this. And this will support it so it won't fall off when you go undoing the snaps to remove the, the hatchet. Okay. So, or tomahawk, whatever it is. But this will change look entirely once I'm, once I'm finished with it. Because it's still got sanding and everything. And sanding these are really hard because I've got to use a file. And let me grab that real quick. Somebody's going to want to know. I use a file like this. When this thing dries, I've got to work around inside these edges here. And it's a lot harder to get in there uh, with a sander like I usually use. So, I'm going to be using my trusty drill press once again with my metal rod. And that's all it is. It's not a drill bit. Just a metal rod. And I go through and punch holes. Uh, I'll use my guide. I'll be using my guide today. I think I'm going to use my long guide right here. This is to make your, looks like a little spur. You just take this guy here, put it dead center of the project, and run it all the way down. And you make nice little dots. So you just follow those dots all the way down to get your holes for your stitch. And I got to get started. I'm having to detail by hand this whole thing. So I'm having to use my hand drill to go around but can't get it with the belt but you could use this for just about everything and you start cleaning up that let's see if I can show you. you start cleaning up that edge there yeah just like that anyways and then the file I got in here pretty good with the file and it's this guy here you just you gotta take your time you're just doing this number here the whole time pain in the butt but yeah i got the holes done and i gotta move on to stitching here in a minute and i'll go ahead and probably stitch this up and then dye it but i'm not sure how i'm gonna roll with this i got my 556 five, brass in there and i just need to know where these holes are going to be but I'm going to go ahead and make my two holes so you can put a lanyard in there.
probably get it soon. And there's your land, your landing holes, just like that. Finished, I've got a whole box full of unique items. Let's just slide this over real quick. This comes out real easy. It's got a nice, nice loop to it. It all turned out well. This is uh, something anyone can do. And you, you see just stapling it down and laying it out there. And see now it'll be connected to their belt. And they can just slip this right out of there, just like that. And then putting it in the same goes right in there just like that so you can you can i'm pretty sure you could just kind of flick it in there or whatever there's that here's uh here's the unique uh the the uh the unicorn the unicorn sheath this is very cool uh very simple i did a um i did a tensioner on here so uh if someone needed to tighten this up more for whatever reason, they could just tighten this up and it'll start squeezing in here just a little bit more. Uh, I didn't want to do anything too crazy with that. This, uh, I did a tighten survival cord. All you got to do is grab. Uh, this is, uh, I am a jarhead. I do know how to wrap stuff. I was with sailors a lot, so they wrapped everything in paracord. But um, you just grab, yank, and this will unravel and you can tie it to your leg. So there's that. So the person that gets it would probably need to know that. Uh, once again, grab, yank, and this will unravel and do what you want with it. This also has a tensioner as well. I did a tensioner on both of these. Just in the event for some reason, you want this to be a little bit tighter. It doesn't need to be, but I'm just being nitpicky. One's left, one's right, like I said before. This is the buck knife sheath. It turned out great, and... Uh, this is for another individual that, uh, uh, you can contact me on Instagram. Someone contacted me on Instagram about this. And if you contact me on there, if you need, it doesn't matter what it is. I will discuss it with you, but be realistic because, you know, like I was saying, be realistic. And, uh, uh, if you don't have a lot of money and you're wanting to trade, then be realistic in that department too. It's got to be something that's going to be useful or helpful. Um, like like I've said before, knives um, knives really don't help. You know, it, it's good to have a knife, but you know, I've got I've got knives. You guys have seen my knives. I've got some knives. I don't need. I just don't really want to trade for knives anymore. And not unless someone's got some old school pump shotguns, they want to trade me. I'll I'll trade some guns. You know, then we can talk about transfers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, all these turned out, uh, every, all these turned out fine. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these two look much better than those Pakistani knife sheaths that they came with. And, uh, these look great. I mean, with, you go try and buy these somewhere else. You'll get, uh, you can get Chinese versions of stuff like this that are not made out of 10 ounce. They're not made out of 10 ounce. They're made out of four ounce or five. And you'll see them. They look really good in pictures online. They're made out of four and five ounce. And you could probably find one for like 40, 50 bucks, right? But it's not made out of the same type of material. Thread, everything is totally different. It's made out of that really cheap, thin sewing machine fabric stuff. It, it will fall apart on you in a heartbeat. It's not something that I would trust to carry a high-end knife if you're going to do a high-end knife you would want some american leather you would want you know what i mean uh and this is real stuff man this takes forever to cut with a razor blade and that's the kind of stuff that i would want to carry my things around in and and another thing that makes makes it unique about doing your own projects your own leather work is where are you going to find a tomahawk scout carry knife sheath i'm just saying and you're not going to find that i don't i don't even think that's possible if you do congratulations but if you don't then i told you so <laughs> but there you go but that's it uh these are i've got to hurry up these have got to get shipped out and i've got more stuff that has to get finished and shipped out and uh but like i said before this is how
here so you can see my face. But this is how I raise money, and um, there is this option, and there's also Patreon. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that uh, the amount of content that I put out on Patreon is epic compared to most people. You get uh, there's different levels of it, and I I literally have files on the files I've gathered up over the years. I've got every type of uh, military field manual you can think of. I've got every type of book on prepping you could think of. If it's out there, there's some type of version of something I've got that can help someone, and you can bu you can build your preparedness library. Just like that, I've got reloading data, all sorts of reloading related items in the reloading folder. You know what I mean? I've got folders on there now. So uh, uh, come join us on Patreon. I do a live stream twice a week on there. There's one tonight. So uh, come join us. Log in. <laughs> come be a part of the group. Uh, it's growing. It's growing pretty good. And yeah, a lot of the folks that are on there are... They show up religiously to the chats and and if they don't chat they just hang out and I will still get the messages in the sidebar I'll still get the messages if they send a message to me but uh, I just want people to realize that there's more going on and you know there's other channels that put out information but there's there's content that I put out on patreon you won't hear on YouTube you will not hear it here so I'm just saying all right, you're watching SOS. I'm Stas RMBA. Have a beautiful, fabulous day. You going to say bye? Bye. Bye. Bye, baby. All right. Love you guys. Love Take care. Day. God bless.